All right, to reach the first portal, we are going to start from the giant claw tube that sticks up out of the water. And from here, we're gonna head south until we reach the Cragfield biome. Now going here, all you're gonna really need to bring is your Seamoth with a Mark II depth module and perimeter defense for some extra safety. As far as tools go, you're gonna wanna bring a knife and a stasis rifle for, again, extra safety. And as far as hostile creatures go, whenever you come to this area, the main two hostile creatures that you're gonna be running into are mesmers, which are like the super tiny fish that are kind of annoying because they can sort of like mind control you, but they can only affect you if you're outside of your vehicle. If they do mind control you, the way to break free is you just simply have to move your camera frantically in different directions or just far in another direction while moving away and you'll break free of their grasp because if you do get too close to them they can do some pretty pretty good damage and then the other threat that you're going to run into are bone sharks which can damage your seamoth which is the annoying part they can damage you and your seamoth pretty good so you can either use permanent defense against them to get them away from you or you can hit them with your stasis rifle So once you reach the crack fields, you're going to continue straight and you're going to eventually run into like this big old alien door, which is going to lead to the portal. Past this life pod. So as you keep heading straight, you're eventually going to see this big old rock right here, rock formation, whatever you want to call it. You're going to see this as you're heading south. And once you see this, you're going to go straight over it. And then you're going to go straight down while hugging the bottom of this rock. So just all the way down, all the way down. You're going to see the alien door right here because you're going to be able to see these lights right here. Like, yeah, here's the alien door. Once you're at the alien door, all you have to do is get out of your seam off and go in. And then we have the alien arch or the portal, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. So with that, let's go on to the next portal. All right, to reach the next portal location, we're going to start from the giant portal to the six of out of the water again. And from here, we're going to head about two notches to the left of Southwest until we reach the floating island. Now going here, you don't really need anything too special to be honest. You can just bring your Seamoth or your Sea Glide so you can reach the island faster. And as for tools, you don't really need to bring anything special either because there's not really, you know, any threats at this biome. The only aggressive creature that's at this location is going to be cave crawlers, and even then, they can barely do any damage to you, and they have very little health. You can easily get rid of them like, with like one or two swipes of your knife. Just go a little bit off to the right and you're gonna see this little area that you can walk up on so once you reach the floating islands you're gonna again go up the left path all the way up here you're gonna go past all these rocks and then you're gonna see a path you're gonna have two options here so you're gonna you're gonna be able to either go to the left or you're gonna be able to go to, to the right and you're gonna want to go to the right so we're gonna go up the right path right here and then you're gonna go to the left again i mean not again but you're gonna go to the left you go past this tree you're gonna see this cave entrance right here you're gonna head into this cave and once you're at the bottom of the cave you'll be able to access the alien portal that is right here in the floating islands and with that we can head on to our next portal location all right to reach our next portal location we're going to start from the giant portal to the six of out of the water again and from here we are going to head two and a half notches to the right of north until we reach the mountain island. Now, when going to the mountain islands, you're going to want to bring your sea moth with a, well, you don't really need a depth module on your sea moth, but you are going to want to have perimeter defense on your sea moth just in case. And as for tools, as far as tools go, you're going to bring your knife and your stasis rifle. As far as hostile creatures go, it's going to be the same thing as the last spot. So cave crawlers are going to be the main thing that you run into here. Not big, not that big of a threat. But the other thing that you might run into on your way to the actual island are Reaper Leviathans because the mountain island is right next to the mountain biome, which is where the Reapers are. Now, there's a chance you might not see one, and there, there's also a chance that you may see one, which is why I just recommend you bring your stasis rifle and perimeter events just in case you do happen to, you know, run into one. 
Alright, as we can see, we are now at the island. So once you reach the front of the island, you're gonna head around the left side. And you're just gonna hug this left side. And whenever you start to see this sand on the ground, you can come up out the water. Because this is gonna be where you get out of your vehicle. I'm just leave my sea mouth right here. Alright, now once you're on this little beach, you're going to head straight. I'm just gonna head straight all the way to the alien gun, basically. But we're gonna stop a little bit right before we get there. Once we can see this door to the alien gun, instead of going straight and like into the alien gun, you're gonna turn right and you're gonna see these two pillars up here, like these little light. And when you see these two lights, you're just gonna head up here and you're gonna follow the light because it, the lights are actually, they actually indicate like a little path that you can follow. There's a purple tablet right there and that we can just pick up. We go past this alien gun. Keep going straight and then I'm gonna go to right and then straight up this path. So now once you reach this big old cave entrance right here, you're gonna go up in here and then you're gonna have two paths. You're gonna be able to go to the left or to the right. You're gonna go to the left. So once you get through that first cave, you go up this path, you're gonna see two paths that you're gonna be able to go to. You're gonna be able to go to the right or to the left. And again, and you're gonna go to the right. And then you're gonna see another, you know, like crossroads where you can go to the left or to the right again. You're gonna go to the right and you're gonna go straight. And then you will see the alien portal right here in the middle of the mountain islands. We are going to head on to our next portal location. All right, to reach our next portal location, we are going to start from the giant crow tube that sticks about of the water again. And from here, we're going to head about two notches to the right of northeast until we reach the bulb zone biome. Now, when going to the bulb zone, you're going to want to bring your Seamoth with a Mark II depth module. You're also going to want perimeter defense on that Seamoth. As far as tools go, you're going to 100% want to bring your stasis rifle and a sea glide just in case you get caught outside of your vehicle or something. And as far as hostile creatures go, when you come to this biome, you're going to be running into bone sharks, amphials, mesmers, and warpers. So warpers can teleport you out of your seamoth. Pretty annoying, pretty annoying. They can teleport you out of your seamoth or while you're swimming around regularly. You can either attack them with a knife until they take enough damage to warp away, or you can simply just outrun them on your sea glide if they do teleport you. Bone sharks, you can hit them with your perimeter defense, or you can hit them with a stasis rifle to freeze them and give yourself time to run away. Amphials are immune to perimeter defense, so you can't use that against them, but you can can hit them with your stasis rifle to freeze them and give yourself time to run away. And mesmers can't affect you unless you're outside of your vehicle. If they do try to mind control you, simply just look in a different direction or start frantically moving your camera around to break free of their grasp. Once you reach the bulb zone biome, you're just gonna keep going straight in the same direction you were going. going straight to a certain point you're gonna eventually reach this big old drop because it's gonna be you're gonna see this these two giant bulb trees and whatnot and then it's just gonna drop straight down and you're gonna want to head straight down again in the same direction that you were heading before you're gonna hug the you're gonna hug the rocks behind you and whatnot so that you stay close to the like stay in the actual biome i'm just gonna head straight down straight down straight down and then you should eventually see these green lights again which is going to be the alien door that leads to the alien portal. But with that, we can head on into this alien door right here. And here we are at the next alien portal. With that, we can head on to our next portal. All right, so for the sake of simplicity and to make things a little bit easier for you, I'm going to combine these last two spots together because they are technically like right on top of each other. So to reach the last portal locations, we are going to start from the giant portal tube that sticks out of the water once again. And from here, we're gonna head about two notches to the left of Northwest until we reach the Northwestern Mushroom Forest. Now going here, all you're gonna wanna bring is your Seamoth with a Mark II depth module and its perimeter defense. You're also gonna wanna bring your Stasis Rifle if you want to be extra safe. And as far as threats go, the only thing, the main thing that you'll run into in the Northwestern Mushroom Forest is going to be Bone Shark, and they are in very little numbers as well, so that's also a plus. Basically the same as before. Let's hit them with your Stasis Rifle, or you can hit them with perimeter defense to get them up off you. Either or works. And you can also just avoid them all entirely. So 
once you reach the northwestern mushroom forest, we're going to be going near the seafloor, and we're going to be looking for this giant crevice in the biome, because this is where the portal is going to be. So this giant crevice in the ground is what you're going to be looking for once you reach the northwestern mushroom forest. And if you went in the same direction that I did, you should see it like shortly after entering the biome. But once you reach this crevice, we're going to head down into it. We're going to continue through the crevice until it opens up on the right side or left side depending on which way you went down until you see this opening on one of your sides and you're going to head into this opening and you're going to shortly see the alien door that leads to the alien portal so let's just head in here and as we can see our alien portal for the Northwestern Mushroom Forest is right there. And with that, let's head on to our very last portal location. All right, to reach our final portal location, we are going to start from the Mushroom Forest, the Northwestern Mushroom Forest that I just showed. We're going to start from there. And from there, we are going to head about two notches to the right of north until we reach the blood kelp zone that is located right next to the northwestern mushroom forest. Gosh, that was a mouthful. Now when coming here, you're gonna wanna bring your Seamoth with a Mark III depth module. You're also gonna want to have permanent defense on that Seamoth. As far as tools go, you're gonna wanna bring your Sea Glide, your Sea Glide and your Stasis Rifle. As far as hostile creatures go, the main thing you'll be running into are River, prow river Prowlers. Gosh, can't speak. So we got River Prowlers, Warfers, and then the Ghost Leviathan that's in that area. So the Ghost Leviathan, either hit it with permanent defense if it does come near you, or if you're outside of your vehicle, hit it with your stasis rifle, freeze it, and give yourself time to run away. River Prowlers, you can just hit with hit them with permanent defense or your stasis rifle to get them up off you. And Warpers, again, they can teleport you out of your sea moth or while you're swimming around regularly. So if they do teleport you, use your sea glide to outrun them, or you can attack them with your knife until they take enough damage to warp away. And once we've reached the, now that we are in the blood kelp zone, we're going to keep going straight like I've been doing. We're going to keep going straight, keep going straight until you get past this rock right here. Then we're going to stop. So once you get past that little, this big old rock right here on your, it's going to be on your right side. You're going to be in this area right here. And when you look down, you should not be able to see the bottom of the sea floor, which is how you're going to know you're in the right spot. So when you reach this spot, you're going to head straight down. You're going to go all the way down until you reach the very, very bottom. When you come down and you hit the very bottom, the sea floor of the Northern Blood Kelp Zone, you're going to see three paths. Whenever you turn around, you're gonna see a path to the left, to the middle, and then you're gonna see one to the right. And you're gonna to head to the path on the right, which is gonna be between Southwest and West. You're gonna to head through this path on the right, and you're gonna hug the right wall the entire time you're on this path. So you're just gonna stay right next to the wall onto your right. Keep hugging the wall until you see this little mini waterfall right here. You're gonna see the lights and then the door is gonna be right here. It's gonna lead you to the portal in this area. We have our Lost River portal right here. And then to activate all those portals, you have to go to the primary containment facility, but that's for another time. But other than that, that is about all I have for y'all. Thank y'all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.